Hello and welcome back to RC Model Reviews and this time no mini quads. No, this time I'm looking at the Eagle, the EPP Eagle from Hobby King with instructions. Um, it's behind me, look at it. Actually, I'm really actually very impressed with how good that looks. Given that it's EPP, which is a really crap material, dimensionally it's difficult to make EPP stuff fit together properly. And this is no exception. I mean, the bits are a pretty rough fit and you've got to you hold your mouth at the right angle and, you know, sort of go and put your tongue out to make it all fit together. But hey, it, it does go together. And it's not a, what would you call it? It's not a Concours d'Elegance kit. It's not something off the top shelf, but it's fun. It's a fun kit, a fun thing to put together. Well, say kit ARF. I mean, there's only really the tail feathers to glue on. Well, you've got to build the fuselage up a bit. But hey, it's really simple. I think total time, probably about three hours, but. I do things pretty slowly anyway. Um, little trap for young players, you get this instruction booklet here, just put it back together, like that, you see it all looks very simple, and you open it up and think, oh yeah, there's three pages, so if you're silly like me and you start on page one, um, it's not the right place to start. No, you, you start on page, this page, because this is the instructions for one version of the kit, and this is the instructions for the version you actually get. So, a bit confusing. Never mind, it's not rocket science. You're not going to get lost. It's pretty straightforward. The only difference is that one version comes with the wing kind of pre-built and the other one you've got to put the wing together yourself. <gasps> Big deal. Hey, who cares? But instructions are totally adequate. No more, just adequate. Even though they've got lovely pictures. This, there's some things in here I didn't like. But, um, for example, when you're building the fuselage, there's no indication as to what angles to put the motor mount or where to put the motor mount. There's some pictures but they're a bit vague and you don't know whether to give it any down thrust or up thrust or side thrust or what do you do? And there's nothing that keys the motor mount in place. It just sort of glues wherever you stick it. So <laughs> I had to take a bit of time to make sure I didn't get the thrust angles wrong and you'll probably have to do the same. And when I was putting it together I thought, whoa, this is really flimsy because it's just EPP and it's quite thin so it bends and buckles. But once you get the fuselage section or the body section all put together, it sort of becomes a box section and it's much, much stronger. Um, putting the wings together, there was a bit of faffing around there. There was a gap between the wings. It didn't go together quite right. And so, yeah, I used uh, the glue that they supply in the nice silver tube, which I've just gone and lost. Um, it's like the Hobby King solvent based EPO, EPP glue, and it works really well actually. I did use epoxy on the carbon parts because I don't trust that glue on carbon parts. And I used a little bit of CA on things like holding the, the horns on. You get control horns, they're pretty bodge. It's got carbon push rods. It's all a bit, you know, how you going. It's not what I would do when I was setting up linkages and things, but it works. It seems to work anyway. So uh, let's take a look inside and let's have a look at the build now that it's finished. And I mean, it's just too big to actually get into shot here in my little studio. It's just too big a plane because it is quite big. I don't know what it is, that 1.4 meters or something. It's quite a big wingspan, and it really is a wingspan, isn't it? Um, it's got the little nylon prop on here. It's got a prop saver with a little O-ring. That'll perish and break in no time at all in the summer sun around here. Um, I'll see how well it goes before I put a collet on because this is still pretty, you know, it's not strong. It's not a strong model. If you come in here, doink it like that, maybe with a collet it might actually rip the firewall out because, and I did use a bit of epoxy holding the firewall on. The, the, uh, the, the soft rubbery glue they give you probably not the best for that. Um, the motor seems quite acceptable. It's fairly low KV. It shouldn't draw much current actually. Um, notice it's got carbon reinforcement in the wings, which is good, but they're still, having said that, the wings are still quite wobbly. It's not stiff. EPP is never stiff. So um, I'll show you how I've put it together um, in terms of inside how I've laid stuff out, give you an idea if you're going to build one for yourself. Starting at the front, motor, firewall, blah, blah. Um, I've used a 30 amp speed controller. You don't need a 30 amp speed controller. This motor is probably going to draw, not going to draw much more than 10 amps. It's low KV and it's got a fairly small prop. So don't worry about the speed controller too much. You will have to provide your own, of course. Now, Velcro in there to hold the battery in. I was quite surprised. It says up to three cell 2200, but I've got a 1500 here that I'm going to use because I want to keep it nice and light. And the battery has, actually has to be this far back for it to balance at the right place. So you don't have to shove stuff right at the front. Uh, and so if you want to use a large battery, it's not going to make much difference to the CG because it's pretty close to the CG. So you can throw a 2200, even probably a, a bigger battery in there if you wanted to. Little nine gram servos, some of the Hobby King orange ones I bought years ago and I'm still using. Um, it's got carbon fibre push rods. I don't know why, but it has. Hmm, it's better than wire, I suppose. I've mounted my receiver. Again, this is just a receiver I had laying around. You wouldn't need a telemetry eight channel receiver in this. It only uses three channels. Oops, sorry. Um, so I put the old Free Sky telemetry receiver in there. I put the antennas up here. because it's got some core flute and cut some strips off and then I just slid the antenna leads up inside there. So I've got a nice 90 degree V roughly for the tail. And as we move along, you can see the tail itself is, I'll turn it over. You can have a good look. 
the tail itself is just slotted and it's got this really these sort of quite bodgy and cheap connectors on here. I'm going to put some heat shrink on there. Do not worry, I will not fly without heat shrink on there to stop these crevices from possibly pinging apart under load. And there we go, dancing wings, isn't that lovely? Um, yeah, and as you can see up the front here, yeah, really not much else to report. It all went together fairly straightforward. It's got wing dowels because it uses rubber bands to hold the wings on. So you've got wooden dowels there, wooden dowel there. Haven't even bothered to glue them in because they're quite a tight fit. That's lovely. And yeah, I guess there's not a lot else to do now but charge up that battery and fly the damn thing. Right, time to throw this thing into the air. There's a bit of wind today, a bit more than I'd like, but we'll see what happens. It flies very slowly, it flies very nicely. I can't really criticise it. It was a bit pitchy because it's very turbulent up there today. But given the conditions, I'm quite impressed with the way this flies. Now I can't wait to actually get out there and find some thermals and see if the damn thing will thermal because it's pretty light and it's a dream to fly. It's easy to land. Hey, brilliant.